from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. President Biden and Senate GOP negotiators are still very far apart on an infrastructure deal. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. What's expected to change today? Coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a little bit of a break in the rain, well, at least for my drive in this morning, but boy, we got a lot yesterday. We sure did, and it was actually cool last night for a while. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is June 4th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, uh, almost a downpour in my area. Oh yeah, plenty of showers and storms around. And I have a feeling this is the trend going into the weekend as well. We'll see if my prediction is true with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Going good morning, first of all, but uh, going into the weekend, yes. Okay. Now things will start to taper off a little bit and see a little more light uh, toward the end of the tunnel. But yeah, we're going to have another round. Nothing out there right now, kind of a calm morning, but we are going to be seeing uh, more showers and a few uh, storms later on today. And here's what it looks like on radar right now. We have got got a few showers down here to the southeast kind of moving off to the sort of northeast but they'll start to see some of these showers trying to pop up as the the morning rolls on later on this afternoon heavy downpours can be expected once again today some areas especially south of town picked up four or five inches of rain in the past 24 hours. Yeah, it was coming down just in buckets there for a while. 68 uh, here in town, 65 Seguin Comfort. Temperatures are actually about to two, three degrees below normal right now. And yesterday we only, thanks to the cloud cover, thanks to the rain, only got up to 78, which is almost 10 to 15 degrees below normal. Mold is still very, very high, but about half of what it was the previous day. I would expect that number to be going up later on today, given all the moisture around here. And uh, we're looking at upper 70s again today. More showers, more thunderstorms, more potentially heavy rain. Going to be a wet one tomorrow. A little more sunshine on Sunday. So hopefully we get a chance to uh, dry out. Who would have thought we'd say that a couple of months ago? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stephanie. Thank you, Mike. An update on the pandemic here in Bear County. Numbers continue to drop when it comes to COVID-19 cases. Metro Health says as more vaccinations happen, cases will continue to drop. Our seven day average now stands at 106 COVID-19 cases per day. Four new deaths were also reported. In our hospitals, 140 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 42 are in the intensive care unit and 23 are on ventilators. And when it comes to our positivity rate, that percentage has stayed below 3% for another week. It now stands at 1.3%. The goal now is to get 70% of the county vaccinated. Right now that number stands at about 50%. The numbers show that about 64% have at least one dose. Well, some of you may still have questions about vaccines. Our KSAT Community Phone Bank will help you get answers to those questions this evening. Dr. Jason Bowling, Director of Hospital Epidemiology from University Health, will be addressing your concerns and answering any questions in today's KSAT Q&A. The phone bank is today from 5 to 7 p.m. We'll be providing the number to call later today. You can find more information on KSAT.com. This morning, President Biden will deliver remarks on the May jobs report. Analysts expect the data to show strong growth in employment last month. The president is likely to use the data to pitch his infrastructure plan. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest on where the talks stand. Another week coming to an end with no deal yet on President Biden's infrastructure plan. But the White House still appears keen on a bipartisan deal, making major concessions to keep Republicans on board. The president shaving $1.3 trillion off his original $2.3 trillion package and dropping his original proposal to pay for the plan by raising corporate taxes. Based on their bottom lines, uh, many of the Republican negotiators should be able to agree. The president's plan includes money for roads, bridges, water facilities, and non-traditional infrastructure like the caregiving economy. The White House says the plan will create millions of jobs and rebound the economy. The talks continue as new unemployment claims hit a pandemic low under 400,000. And the May jobs report out this morning is expected to show even more optimistic news. But the biggest roadblock in the negotiations appears to be the president's new push to close gaps in the tax law. Let me just give you a simple fact. Last year, for example, 55 of our largest corporations in America paid zero dollars in federal tax. Zero. Biden's latest proposal would force corporations to pay at least 15 percent. Well, I don't think that's going to appeal to members of my party. The president also facing opposition within his own party. 
Progressive Congressman Jamal Bowman tweeting, quote, two trillion dollars was already the compromise. POTUS can't expect us to vote for an infrastructure deal dictated by the Republican Party. But Democratic Senator Joe Manchin telling CNN he's not ready for Democrats to go at it alone. We need to do something in a bipartisan way. And sources tell ABC News Republicans will likely present President Biden another counteroffer today during their meeting. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. U.S. Justice Department coordinating its ransomware efforts with a same protocols as it does for terrorism. It follows a slew of cyber attacks disrupting key infrastructure sectors ranging from gas distribution to meat packing. U.S. prosecutors must now file internal reports on all ransomware investigations to better coordinate the tracking of online criminals. Justice Department is calling the malicious software that seizes control of the computer until the victim pays a ransom or fee an urgent threat to our nation's interests. The nation was hit by more than 15,000 ransomware incidents against organizations last year alone, costing our country up to $2.3 billion. National Park Service says a single wildfire has destroyed 10 to 14 percent of the world's giant sequoia trees. Satellite images show the shocking impact the Castle Fire had on California Sequoia National Forest last summer. The Park Service reports up to 10,000 of the 300 foot tall sequoias were lost, many of them thousands of years old. The massive fire was triggered by the drought and ironically well-meaning fire suppression efforts. We have a follow-up for you. A new report. The New York Times says American intelligence officials have found no evidence that aerial phenomena witnessed by Navy pilots in recent years are alien spacecraft. However, the article goes on to say they still cannot explain the unusual movements that have mystified scientists and the military, according to the findings of a highly anticipated government report. The Times reports uh, determines that a vast majority of the 120 incidents over the past two decades did not originate from any American military or other U.S. government technology. However, because the findings in the report are so ambiguous, senior officials say government officials cannot definitively rule out theories that the phenomena observed by military pilots might be alien spacecraft. And time now is 437 and about 68 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, an important warning for new parents about some questionable sleep products for infants. And the winner-take-all regional final game continues later today for the Smithson Valley Rangers after a rain delay. We're going to tell you how the team is doing so far. And outside with live cam, not a bad morning out there. The low clouds have moved back in in some spots. It's a bit humid, but not bad. Upper 60s for this Friday, June 4th. We'll be right back. 440 time for a look at morning sports. Ranger fans pack the stands at Cavanus Field in Corpus Christi to watch Smithson Valley take on Los Fresnos yesterday in a winner take all regional final in high school ba boys bas uh, baseball. Rangers taking control early. Bottom of the first, Rangers on third and second. Ethan Gonzalez hits a line drive to right that will easily score Tim Arguello, but it's going to be close for Garrett Brooks as he slides to beat the tag and is safe. 2 0 Smithson Valley. Bottom of the sixth now up to bat for Los Fresnos is Victor Lowe and he hits a hot one to second and it's too hard to handle as he beats the throw to first and the bases are full of Falcons with one out. And that's when the skies opened up causing weather delay. The game has been postponed until later this morning, 11 a.m. in Corpus, weather permitting. On to Missions Baseball, San Antonio took advantage of some great pitching and big hits for their second victory in a row against Springfield last night. Missions trailed early. Cardinals scored in the bottom of the second on a whole solo homer, but then San Antonio proceeded to score nine unanswered runs from the fourth to ninth innings. Final score 9-1. Missions stay in Missouri again tonight through Sunday. New series starts Tuesday against the Acadiana Cane Cutters. Some NBA action game five Portland first round series Nuggets Blazers Portland head coach Terry Stotts can't believe what he's seeing Blazers had a 14 point lead with six and a half to play in the third only to watch Denver go on a 40 to 15 run Denver takes game five and the series of the final 126 to 115 and the LA Lakers and Mr. LeBron James were eliminated in their series last night. What a shame. <laughs> Time now is 442 and about 68 degrees right now. If you have an infant at home, there are new regulations for the sale of different sleep products. What is changing and what you should know next.
Also next, a positive COVID test on a major movie set. What this means for other big blockbusters that are now ramping up filming. And welcome back. It's about 4.45. The production of the latest Tom Cruise film, Mission Impossible 7, has been shut down due to a positive COVID-19 test. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details of today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, production halted again on the set of Mission Impossible 7. At least one positive COVID-19 test on set. The shutdown comes just six months after that now infamous rant from Tom Cruise, after seeing crew members on set disregarding safety protocols. We shut down, it's gonna cost people jobs. Their home, their family, that's what's happening. All the way down the line. I care about you guys. If you're not gonna help me, you're gone, okay? Overnight, Paramount confirming the virus was detected in routine testing on their UK set. The crew now forced to self-isolate for two weeks. The studio saying they'll resume production on June 14th and ensuring in a statement, we are following all safety protocols and will continue to monitor the situation. So what does this mean for other big blockbusters? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. A new alert for new parents. Uh, safety regulators have voted to ban the sale of various infant sleep products. This includes inclined sleepers that have been linked to more than 90 deaths. Told on your side's Marilyn Moritz looks at what's changing and what parents should do now. It's a move aimed at protecting vulnerable babies as they sleep. The Consumer Product Safety Commission's new rule says all products marketed for sleep for babies up to five months old must meet safety standards. This includes inclined sleepers and in-bed sleepers. We're hoping that a year from now, when parents go shopping for something for their infant to sleep in, it will be meeting a safety standard. Millions of inclined sleepers have been recalled in recent years. At least 94 deaths have been linked to various inclined sleep products, and 12 more have been linked to in-bed sleepers, according to Consumer Reports. Inclined sleepers position babies at an angle greater than 10 degrees. The risk? Safety advocates say infants can roll over into the side and suffocate, or their heads slump forward, cutting air supply. We urge parents, if you have one of those inclined sleepers, to please stop using it. Beginning in one year, these unregulated products will have to meet standards, just as cribs, bassinets, and play yards have to now. Many families already own and love these products, and you'll probably still see them in stores for a while. But safety advocates say don't use anything for infant sleep that doesn't meet existing sleep standards. The safest way for babies to sleep, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, is on a firm, flat surface. Marilyn Moritz, case at 12. News. Now 447. A lot of rain yesterday, but uh, how about today, Mike? We're going to see some more uh, potentially very heavy downpours, you know, and the thing is, the, as we keep going on in time, it's not going to take as much to cause situations like this because the ground is so saturated. This was down around Catula and uh, yeah, you know, and before that receded and uh, some of the skies cleared out, you know, that was covering all the road right down there. So thank you for that uh, case at connect picture, Mr. Childers. Right now, nothing is going on out there at the airport. We don't really have anything showing up on radar right now. This is going back on the satellite radar loop 12 hours, and this was right as the rain was ending here in town. Everything's sliding off to the east, and then it sort of settled down just a little bit. And as far as some rainfall totals, as a lot of computer models were indicating, most of it down to the south and to the east. And look at that in South Bear County, northern Atascosa County. That's where some of the lion's share was. Some of the radar estimates, five to six inches of rain down there in the south end, right down along 37. And even further south, McMullen County, about five and a half inches. Gonzalez County, four to five. And uh, boy, here in and around town, picked up just over an inch, about an inch and a quarter out there at the airport. But again, down on the south side and even over there, uh, just right around Medina Lake, inch and a half, two inches of rain, a lot of it. And that's just these downpours that can take place. And that's going to be the situation, like I said, again today. So nothing is showing up on radar right now. This is a little clutter around the radar site. The only thing is down here to the southeast. But notice some of these little showers starting to even pop up here. And those will just kind of linger and work their way off to the northwest a little bit more. So here's a computer model throughout the day. It's got a couple of showers scattered about the area, but again, by mid-morning, more of these are going to start to develop. 
We'll continue to see more and more of them popping up here. Notice how it's kind of moving in this counterclockwise fashion. We still have this low, which is parked around here, and that's what's helping to draw the moisture in, and that's what's the triggering mechanism for more of these showers. So this is mid afternoon and notice the movement again. More of these showers, some heavy downpours. Again, not everybody's going to be seeing the really heavy rain, but if you do, it's going to be coming down in buckets. A little bit of a break overnight, but then more potentially heavy rain around the area tomorrow. I think Sunday then we start to see lesser rain, still decent chances and a bit more sunshine on Sunday. 75 degrees today at noon. A couple of showers going to start to pop up around here, maybe a thunderstorm. And then later on this afternoon, uh, only 78 for high temperature. Normal high is 91, so 10, 15 degrees below normal. No complaints here and plenty of showers and storms. Now tomorrow more rain and I think it's the day with you see some of the heavier rain again and then Sunday it's going to taper off a little bit Monday indications that we're going to have a little more of a peak in uh, some of the rain again then it begins to taper off and notice how rain tapers off a little more sunshine temperatures start to go up but again still 89 is not even up to the normal the average temperature. We had that rain around all the yesterday afternoon around 630. I took Truman for a walk mm -hmm. and there was a breeze coming kind of coming out of the northeast and I'm walking and I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm actually cold. <laughs> yeah, it yes. got pleasant there for a while. Yeah. I had to pinch myself mm -hmm. and remember what month we're in. It was just very spring like out there. Yeah, yep. it's a little wild. I actually grabbed my rain jacket and was using it as a jacket jacket yeah. for a little bit. Uh, strange days we're living in, right? Yes. Uh -huh. For more than one reason. 451 about 68 degrees and up next Disney show Showing off their new Avengers campus in California. We're going to hear from the actors, including Ant Man himself, Paul Rudd, who are impressed by the way it turned out. Here are your lottery numbers pick three, seven, four, six, Fireball Zero, Daily Four, six, four, one, zero, Fireball Three. Cash five, one, four, twelve, twenty, twenty one, and your Texas two step, nine, ten, sixteen, thirty five, bonus ball fifteen. Marvel fans now have their very own theme park, plus Stephen King's latest novel jumps to the big screen today. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You can now web sling with Spider-Man and hang with Marvel characters from Black Panther to Doctor Strange. Avengers Campus opens today at Disneyland in Southern California. Paul Rudd plays Ant-Man, and he says when he saw the new six-acre attraction this week, he was impressed. When we were coming over, somebody said it's the closest thing to actually being on set, but it actually is cooler than being on set. It, everything here looks uh, authentic, and it's really exciting. Avengers Campus opens today, but because of COVID rules, for now, only California residents can go to Disneyland. That's expected to change June 15th. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. Come back. The Stephen King novel, Lisey Story, jumps to the screen today as a series for Apple TV+. Plus. Julianne Moore stars as a woman trying to process the murder of her husband while also dealing with some freaky stuff. And she tells me in true Stephen King fashion, the show defies one specific genre. This isn't something that's like straight up horror and supernatural. It's also it's also kind of a, it's drama. It's a it's a love story and a relationship story. There's a great deal of kind of suspense and mystery in it as well. Stephen King adapted Lisey's story for the screen himself, something he hasn't done since 1997's The Shining miniseries. I can see things that your people can't. New at the box office this weekend, it's something else scary. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, is only in theaters. While on Netflix, it's the debut of the fantasy drama series Sweet Tooth. And happy birthday today to director, producer, and Oscar-winning actress Angelina Jolie. She's 46. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It is now uh, 456, still 68 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, from extreme flooding to extreme drought. We're going to get a look at different parts of the country that are dealing with abnormal weather conditions. Plus, Airbnb celebrating 25 years of the Macarena dance song with a unique Spanish getaway. Details coming up in your morning tech bites. And ahead on GMSA at 6, some pro tips to make your backyard ready for parties. And checking the roads for Trans Guide. See how things are looking out there. Very light traffic. 410 at San Pedro by North Star. There's 35 at San Marcos. A slow start to our Friday morning commute, but Stephen Cavazos just walked into the studio. He'll have a traffic update coming up.
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning while our area and other parts of the South deal with relentless rain. A good portion of the western U.S. is in the midst of a drought so severe that it's off the charts of anything recorded in the 20 year history of the U.S. drought monitor. But not here. We've had so much rain this spring. It has been a drought buster. And right now we're looking outside with live cam. Lots of humidity in place and Mike says more rain and storms are in our forecast. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, June 4th. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I don't want the rain anymore. I wanted it, but uh, that being said, uh, it's nice to get a little break in the temperatures. That's right. Uh, they remain uh, unseasonably low. Mike Hat Osterage has more. Yeah, 78 for a high yesterday. Normal average is 91. So that's what you get when you have all these clouds and all this rain. Speaking of which, officially out there at the airport just over an inch yesterday, which was, I mean, an inch of rain in one day is just fantastic. And that was on the lower side of a lot of the rainfall amounts, uh, especially on the south side of Bear County, down to the south, three, four, five inches on uh, a lot of the radar averages. Right now, 68 degrees, so we are still a little bit below normal. And actually, a bit of a break in the humidity. I mean, still 66, but sure beats uh, upper 60s and low 70s. So we'll take that. And uh, only 78 again today. And notice the uh, the percentage is down there. We've got another really good chance for more showers and thunderstorms throughout the day. And any of these are going to be dumping a lot of very heavy rain. So just be aware of that. The aquifer did drop down a little bit yesterday, two tenths of a foot and the allergens mold came down a lot from the previous day, about half of what it was in the previous day, but still it's on the high side. And I would venture a guess that it's going to be way back up there again today with again, all that moisture that we got. Speaking of which, here's what's showing up on radar right now and uh, nothing really in our vicinity vicinity down around Victoria. We've got a couple of these uh, showers down here and a few of these little sprinkles and they're going to continue to kind of just hang out down here, grow a little bit, work their way off to the uh, north and northwest ever so slightly. So starting off this morning, maybe a few more showers primarily off to the east and then we'll see more of these showers and thunderstorms trying to develop by mid morning then by later on this afternoon. So just a shower or two is going to be popping up mainly to the east and southeast this morning. More showers, thunderstorms, a couple of heavy downpours can't be ruled out today and over the weekend. Tomorrow of the two days, tomorrow is going to be the rainiest day. And yeah, again, not rainy constantly, but still some out there and some heavy downpours. Fewer storms on Sunday, one or two of them out there, but I think we'll also have a chance in some places to see more sunshine dry out a little bit. We'll start off with rain again next week on Monday. Then it's going to start to taper off. And as rain chances go down, a little more sunshine, temperatures start to go up a little bit, but still not quite up to what you would expect for June. We'll take that. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What is going on? First of all, good morning, sir. Good What's morning. Going on? Good morning and happy Friday, TGIF. And we have a very nice start to our Friday morning here, which is a stark contrast compared to yesterday. So let's go ahead and jump here to Transguide and show you what we have going on right now. It's been very quiet this morning here on the roads in the Alamo City. Loop 410 at Callahan. Things shaping up nice and smoothly as we drive off and get ready for our weekend. Nothing too major to report right now, but we'll go ahead and take a look at these inbound times and show you what you can expect if you're heading into the downtown San Antonio area. 25 minutes if you are coming in from I-10 to downtown from Bernie. If you're coming in from Highway 90 from Castroville, we got about a 19 minute commute time and 35 coming in from Lytle. We have about 17 minutes and check this out. Yesterday, 35 was a big issue there uh, if you were heading out in the, you know around 7 a.m. yesterday, but 26 minutes right now coming in from New Braunfels to downtown San Antonio. Very nice and smooth again, very different from yesterday, which is what we like to see. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our gas prices. If you're going to be fueling up for a road trip this weekend, it's so average around here, Bear County. We have 258 around the state, 270 and around the country. We're looking at 305 and AAA has actually reported that the Sloan Star State has the lowest gas prices in the country. Now, where does the Alamo City stand? <coughs> we'll have those details coming up. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, sir. Now to the weather extremes from coast to coast and east across parts of the south. People dealing with relentless rain in the west. The opposite problem, a historic drought as fire danger across several states continues to rise. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. As the west coast thirsts for rain with lakes dipping to their lowest level in decades. People on the east coast are getting hit with blinding downpours. 
This video from North Carolina showing what drivers faced on Interstate 95, south of Raleigh, as severe storms moved through the area. In Indiana, two children were hospitalized after a possible lightning strike near Indianapolis. And this driver taking a big risk, crossing a flooded road. An event in Houston called the Extreme Weather Ready Expo has been postponed because of, you guessed it, extreme weather in the forecast this weekend. But on the West Coast, it's the lack of rain posing the threat. Folsom Lake outside Sacramento is 68 feet lower than last year. That drop equivalent to a five-story building. Droughts are common in California, but experts say it's worse this year due to a lack of snow and higher elevations, combined with hotter, drier weather. The before and after pictures at Lake Orville from 2016 to now are striking. The lake in Northern California is on track to drop to its lowest level in 40 years. It provides drinking water to 27 million people and water to 5 million acres of farmland. This crisis extends beyond California. The governor of Utah is now asking people to pray to end the drought there. We need more rain, and we need it now. We need some divine intervention. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Back here at home in New Braunfels, police say heavy rainfalls prompted a temporary closure of the Comal River. That means people are not allowed to go tubing right now or do any other recreational activities because of increased water flow. Police say all the heavy rainfall lately has caused the river to measure over 400 cubic feet per second with poor water clarity. Debris was also found along the riverbanks and the Tube Chute Dam. City officials will reevaluate the closure this morning and determine if it's safe enough for river recreation to continue in New Braunfels. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a suspect wanted in a road rage shooting incident. This happened back on April 22nd in the 6600 block of Medina Base Road near 410 on the southwest side. Officers say after someone in another car honked at him, the suspect got mad and fired a handgun at the victim's vehicle and then drove away. There's no report of the victim being hurt during that incident, but if you have any information on where this person could be, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 210-224-STOP. San Antonio officially getting the return of one of its favorite traditions. City Council voted Thursday to approve several street closures and other administrative matters that paved the way for Fiesta to occur. Uh, on June 17th through 27th as planned. It will no doubt be a different kind of fiesta. It's already been delayed from the normal April time frame and it's estimated there are only about 50 fiesta events this year instead of the usual 110. Big street parades like Battle Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau are among the events that will be foregone, but the Texas Cavaliers River Parade will probably be one of the biggest yet. As far as the pandemic, the mayor was adamant that the uh, pandemic is still not over. However, health officials are recommending attendees get vaccinated to make events as safe as possible. It's nice to see Fiesta back, even though it's in June. <laughs> it, yeah, uh, and so far so good. Hold on to these cooler temperatures, yeah, right? Yeah, that would Through be Through nice. the end of the month, uh -huh. wouldn't that be a blessing? That would all work out. It, I agree. Right now it's 508, about 68 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, how Facebook is making a major change in how it handles posts by politicians. And next on his National Day of Action, we're helping to answer some of the biggest questions people have about getting the COVID-19 vaccine. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Speaking of cooler temperatures, we are in the upper 60s right now. Enjoy. We'll be right back. 511 on your Friday morning. Welcome back. While many have decided to get the COVID-19 vaccine, there are others that still have questions or are very hesitant about getting one. Courtney Friedman tries to answer those questions and two of the main COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, were made using uh, some Two of the main COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, were made using what's called messenger RNA or mRNA. Many people hesitant to get the shot worry it's a brand new type of vaccine. mRNA is a protein in our bodies that teaches other cells how to react to intruders like the virus that causes COVID-19. It's simply a messenger, and once it sends its message, the body destroys it so it does not linger or interact with your DNA. The research surrounding mRNA vaccines has actually been around for decades. Experts say that's why the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were able to be developed so fast. It's thanks to that existing research and the money and leeway given to the trials during this global crisis. 
it happened quickly because they were able to do steps in parallel. So they were able to make the vaccine up front instead of having all these delays. There are all these delays that because the money was there to just create the vaccine, they didn't have to do. So the safety and the, the methods were the same, but you were just able to compress that time frame. Dr. Shad Deering is the maternal fetal medicine department chair at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio and goes over all this information all the time with his patients who are usually pregnant. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology recommends the vaccine be available for pregnant women, citing safety in several different recent and ongoing trials. We've done a large series of stories over the past months about getting the vaccine during pregnancy or while dealing with infertility. You can find those stories on the parenting page at ksat.com. Courtney. And later today, our KSET Community Phone Bank will help get you more answers to those questions. Our phone bank is from 5 to 7 p.m. And we're going to be providing the number to call later today so you can find all this information on our website at ksat.com. 513, about 68 degrees. And still ahead, a look at steps Google is taking to make it harder for advertisers to track users on Android. Plus how Airbnb is celebrating 25 years of the Macarena with a special Spanish getaway. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. The body you are randomly assigned at yeah. birth shouldn't determine how well you are cared for or how hard we work to find answers, partners, and hope. Not just for some, but for everyone. Five seventeen. Welcome back. Facebook are reportedly announcing a major change in how it handles posts by politicians. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a policy change at Facebook. It's set to announce an end to its exemption for politicians who break hate speech rules. The exemption was based on the idea that what political leaders had to say is in the public interest, even if it breaks the rules. Google is making it harder for Android apps to track users. That will happen when so-called advertising IDs of those who opted out of receiving personalized ads are cut off. The extra layer of security starts later this year. Finally, a major milestone for the Macarena. It's been 25 years since it topped the charts to celebrate the duo behind the song Los Del Rio is teaming up with Airbnb to host a luxurious vacation at a villa in Spain. Bookings open June 28th. Part of your stay includes free tips on how to do the Macarena. Remember, cross at the hips. Jump. Hey, those are your tech fights. Have a great day. There will be no Macarena in this studio. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't remember it. Not on my, no, Kevin, no. <laughs> oh, you remember it. <laughs> I was going to say not on my watch, but he's doing it. Kevin's one of our directors. He's working teleprompter today. Not bad from the waist up, Kevin. Yeah, doing a great job. <laughs> no, I completely, Lucky. I mean, no. I know the, the, uh, the tune. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I don't remember and the Michael little remembers dance. the song, so it's a pairing. <laughs> 518, let's check on traffic with Stephen Cavazos. You want to get involved with this foolishness at all, yeah, Mr. Cavazos? I'm doing it under the desk. I'm scared of being judged. Oh. So, <laughs> you yeah. won't judge oh, me. Don't be scared. It's the I do the finger show. pointer. That's the best move on that. So it's just this. So, yeah, hey, it works. Hey, uh, well, you know, we have a really good start to our Friday morning here in the Alamo City. Things are very smooth. So let's go ahead and jump here to Transguide and see what we're looking at this morning. 35 at Salado Creek, I-10 at 35. Very different morning compared to yesterday. We had major crashes in and around the Alamo City, but right now things are looking pretty smooth as we head into this great weekend. And as we're looking around the city, very green, which is again, which is what we like to see as we get ready to uh, end our week and get ready to start our weekend. So we talked a little bit about gas prices when we last saw you here, you know, around the country, we're looking at 304 and we mentioned that Texas has the lowest gas prices in the country at 270. Now, where does Bear County or the Alamo City stand? Well, we are the lowest in the state. Midland is paying about 298 per gallon. This is for unleaded fuel. 
check this out 258 the lowest around the country so that's good news if you're going to be fueling up for a weekend trip or just to fuel up like me because you're running on e it's a good time to head to the gas station and hit the roads your your gas tank's empty right now Stephen? it's almost on empty i don't like putting gas uh at this time of the day coming into work because it's very early and oh that's you know, try to, true you know that's true you want to be yeah. safe but, but there's no crowds mm -hmm. well i am also a procrastinator too I, i'm i'm the biggest procrastinator when oh. it comes to gas oh, my yeah. least favorite thing to do then your hands smell like gasoline all day too exactly oh, exactly hey, well on, we'll get mike to follow you home Steve. <laughs> on, on behalf of case i apologize that the now that macarena is stuck in your head so yeah oh. we, we all apologize right Steph? <laughs> yes we're very sorry <laughs> anyway Hey, this is what it looked like for a lot of folks yesterday. And I mean, check out that rain gauge, almost four inches right around Stockdale. And there were some estimates, uh, you know, that was almost average three, four, five inches of rain, especially in Southern Bear County and south and east of there. Everything is uh, fairly calm right now. No rain is being detected on radar in the vicinity. And uh, high temperatures yesterday, we actually did make it up uh, into the uh, 78 degree range, but we're going to be up there again today. Still. 10, 15 degrees below normal, and even down around Laredo, we're only looking at 87, which is I mean, almost a cold snap when you get to that far south, and a lot of just upper 70s, low 80s around the area later on today. And again, not much is showing up on radar, but notice how a few more of these showers are just cropping up down here, Live Oak County, B, and just, just slowly working their way up. So we'll see a few of these showers, especially in our south and eastern counties this morning. They'll just kind of be popping up here and there, and then more are going to be developing throughout the rest of the morning and then going into this afternoon. The reason for it all is the water vapor imagery. And, you know, at times it's almost like a, it's almost like an X-ray of the atmosphere, I guess the best way to uh, describe it, because you can really make out some of these uh, disturbances right here. And look at that circulation. That's the upper low, which is just kind of hanging around in here. And that's going to continue to not only pump in moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, but also that's the focal point for more of these showers and some thunderstorms. So as I put this graphic into motion, you can see how everything is kind of working its way in a counterclockwise fashion thanks to that low. So we'll have more showers and then get, once again, this is that broad brush kind of computer model, but more showers, potentially heavy downpours. Uh, they'll start to taper off a little bit overnight and then tomorrow we'll do it all over again. Sunday, I think we're going to be seeing, yes, a few more shower storms out here, but also more sunshine thrown on in. So it's going to be lesser chances of rain on Sunday. Monday, another decent disturbance will come on in here and we've got another chance of you know, some heavy downpours, heavier downpours, pardon me, on Monday. Tuesday, uh, we'll still have some rain around here but again the rain chances will continue to taper off as we go on in time and go in toward the middle part of next week but today again we see more of the showers developing this morning even a thunderstorm or two by noon 75 degrees so again not a huge warm-up at all and then later on today 78 that's it for a high temperature showers a couple of more thunderstorms tomorrow more of the same will start off probably fairly tranquil and then things get going as the day rolls on sunday a little bit more in the way of some uh, sunshine monday a couple of heavier downpours still and then it begins to taper off a little bit more long range indications maybe even more rain next weekend and a zero wow. percent chance of the macarena this morning <laughs> You had to bring it up again now. I know. Sorry. Really? I know. I can't even do the chicken dance. Thank you, Mike. 523, about 68 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at the new Avengers Campus, now open at Disney's California Adventure, plus an update on the newest Mission Impossible movie. Here are your lottery numbers. Once again, pick three, seven, four, six, Fireball Zero. Daily four, number six, four, one, zero, Fireball Three. Cash five, one, four, 12, 20, 21. And your Texas two step, nine, 10, 16, 35, bonus ball 15. Good luck. Big movie news from the Avengers to Tom Cruise. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. The Avengers Campus is open at Disney's California Adventure. Visitors can see Spider-Man fly through the air and help him in a 3D attraction that tracks guests' hand gestures. They can also train with the Dora Milaje warriors from Wakanda, learn the mystic arts from Doctor Strange, even go for shawarma as the Avengers did after the Battle of New York. The Anaheim Campus is opening nearly a year behind schedule and just a few days before California loosens almost all COVID-19 restrictions. 
Jones. I'm just trying to make the best movie I can. Tom Cruise and company have paused production on Mission Impossible 7 after at least one person on set tested positive for COVID-19. A Paramount Pictures spokesperson confirms that positive test results came up during routine testing, and production in the United Kingdom would be halted until June 14th. Cruise made headlines last year with an on-set tirade, yelling at crew members for not obeying social distancing measures. Mission Impossible 7 is due out next May. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 527 and it's about 68 degrees right now. U.S. Justice Department turning up the heat on ransomware attackers. Coming up, we'll tell you how and what that means for consumers. Plus, important steps parents can take right now to reduce the risk of their child becoming the next victim of abuse. And it's officially National Donut Day. Shops across the nation offering deals and discounts. We'll tell you about some of the more popular ones coming up. More and more people are getting vaccinated for COVID-19, but can your employer make you get it? That's ahead on GMSA at 6. Making headlines this morning, U.S. Justice Department fighting back against ransomware and cyber attacks that have cost the country billions of dollars. And taking a look outside with live cam, good news for June and the fact that it's pretty nice out there because the temperatures are down with all the rain we've been getting. Yeah, we had a ton of rain in the area yesterday. Not everybody saw some. We'll, we'll talk to Mike in a second. Good morning. It is Friday, June 4th. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, I, I saw the rain. I was uh, picking up my little girl and everybody was just dodging all the puddles and, you know, everything. The rain just, you know, pouring down. Yeah, late day. morning. I'm going mm -hmm. up to 81. Everything comes to a screeching halt with heavy downpours. Yep. Mike, more in the forecast. Yep, we are starting to see a couple of little showers popping up here and there, especially down to the south. Now, just to put it in contrast, out at the airport, just over an inch of rain yesterday. Then on the south side of Bear County, anywhere from four to five inches of rain. And that was uh, kind of the norm in parts of Atascosa County and further down to the south and to the southeast. So, yeah, it really obviously depended on where you lived, and that's going to be the case again today. Temperature right now is at 68 degrees. A lot of humidity, even though dew points are just at 66, but compared to that temperature, so relative humidity is high. Light breeze out of the uh, north right now, just three miles per hour. And yeah, things right now are fairly quiet, but then we've got a few of these little showers that are starting to pop up down here, and those will continue to drift up and to the north and to the northwest, moving a little further inland throughout the morning. And yeah, more heavy downpours can be expected here and there. Molds on the high side, and although it came down a lot from the previous day's reading, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to that with all that rain yesterday and the updated count of course is going to be coming out about 7 seven thirty or so this morning 78 for a high temperature today yeah that's it well below normal normal average is 91 right now although rain chances will continue to go up weekend forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority and Stephen Cavazos what's going on not a whole lot, which is good, Mike. You know, we had a very busy morning here yesterday, but the roads are shaping up to be pretty nice and smooth if you're going to be heading out the door here in the next few moments. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening here at 281 at Hildebrand. This is a route that I actually take every morning. Nice and smooth, no major issues right now. So if you are going to be heading down here to uh, on 281, Nothing bad right now, so that's a good sign. Now let's go ahead and take a look though here off Loop 410 eastbound at Blanco. We did spot a saw here actually out here right in this area in those eastbound lanes at 410. Again, this is at Blanco Road, not making much of a ruckus this morning on the roads, but just give that person plenty of room as they can get out of their way safe, uh, get out of your way safely. That is so we'll be keeping an eye on that throughout the morning and see how that could impact the commute as the morning does pick up. But taking a look here at our inbound times, all green, which is what we like to see again here 281 coming in from Bolverde. That is we're looking at 27 minutes and if you're coming in from 35 on New Braunfels, we got about a 26 minute commute time and coming in from Seguin on I 10 29 minutes to downtown San Antonio. Once again here at 281 at Hildebrand, things are shaping up quite nicely. Mark stuff. Even federal authorities stepping up efforts to combat cyber attacks on American companies. This comes after a large number of ransomware attacks that disrupted key industries. CNN's Reed Binion reports. The government is going to have to step up and find ways to put pressure on these criminals. Cybersecurity expert John Holquist speaking of the growing cyber threat to the nation's critical infrastructure and industries. 
That warning coming as the Department of Justice turns up the heat on how authorities hunt down cyber criminals. An internal DOJ memo signaling the department will prioritize ransomware attacks the same way it does terrorism. But the Biden administration says those efforts alone won't be enough. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki saying private industry must also take action. The federal government under the leadership of President Biden has been stepping up to strengthen the nation's defenses against cyber attacks, but we can't do it alone. The National Security Council's top cyber official penning an open letter to business leaders nationwide, saying in part, quote, we urge you to take ransomware crime seriously and ensure your corporate cyber defenses match the threat. This all comes in the wake of two recent disruptive ransomware attacks targeting major industries, most recently on global meat supplier JBS, and last month, the attack that shut down the Colonial Fuel Pipeline, with panic buying leading to gas shortages in multiple states. Reed Binion, KSAT 12 News. The U.S. military keeping a close eye on two Iranian ships that Tehran claims are bound for Venezuela. Satellite images appear to show one of them is carrying fast attack boats that Iran has used to harass U.S. Navy ships in the Persian Gulf. Those attack boats can be equipped with a variety of weapons, including torpedoes and anti-ship missiles. U.S. officials are indicating they would not tolerate Venezuela having that kind of capability to use against the U.S. Navy or our Coast Guard. Both Venezuela and Iran are trade partners, also subject to harsh U.S. sanctions. It's not clear the exact course the two Iranian ships are taking or even if they are capable of crossing the Atlantic Ocean. The U.S. could see a baby boom this summer. It would come after a decline in pregnancies following the coronavirus shutdown in 2020. Researchers with the University of Michigan used records to document pregnancies and births through the pandemic and model prospective births through October. Their modeling shows an expected surge of births this summer. The researchers say their findings suggest a link between the societal changes associated with the pandemic, like lockdowns and reproductive choices. Well, it looks like supersonic air travel is on its way back to uh, markets, including the U.S. United Airlines has agreed to buy 15 brand new supersonic jets from Boom Technology. They look similar to the Concorde, but Boom says its Overture aircraft are 75% cheaper to operate and more environmentally friendly. Overture jets can travel 1,300 miles per hour, or about as twice as fast as conventional airliners. United says the speed is enough to offer routes from Newark to London that only take about three hours and flights to Japan from San Francisco in six hours. United plans to start piloting the planes in 2029. But I want to make it clear, these planes don't even exist yet. This is just <laughs> a preliminary agreement to buy 15 planes with an option to buy up to 35 in total. Wow. No price tag yet, but it would be pricey like Concord was. Well, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Time now is 537 and about 68 degrees right now. Hey, did you hear it's National Donut Day? We'll tell you where you can get some sweet deals on the popular breakfast treat. And parents, it's time for the talk. Experts say we need to embrace the awkward. Just ahead, what you say to save your child's life. And outside with live cam, the weekend just about here as we take a look at some of the uh, lights at San Antonio International reflecting off those low clouds over our area. Mike has more on your weekend forecast coming up. 540 on your Friday morning. It's estimated that one in five kids will be sexually abused before they turn 18. In 80% of those cases, the child knows their perpetrator. The statistics are terrifying, but there are things parents can do to reduce the, reduce the risk of their child becoming the next victim. RJ Marcus has the details. The sexual abuse started when I was five. Kim Stewart's dad went on to molest her every day for the next 11 years. Unfortunately, Kim's story is not unique. 20% of all child abuse victims are molested by family members. We're looking at people around you, um, and that's a hard thing for parents. DefendInnocence.org is dedicated to helping parents recognize the signs of sexual abuse in their children. Sexual predators often groom their victims, lavishing gifts and attention on them. Oh, Uncle Cody gave me a ride. Oh, he didn't let me know. He told me he's going to get me my own tablet. For parents, the first step is to set boundaries and have open and honest conversations with your child. They say parents need to embrace the awkward. You don't have to have a perfect conversation for it to be meaningful. I still have to have this conversation no matter how weird or uncomfortable it makes me feel. Just keeping communication open with your child is the first step. 
But if you're not asking those questions and you're not engaged in their life, they're not necessarily going to bring those things to your attention. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 541, about 68 degrees. It's National Donut Day, and up next, we're going to look into the origins surrounding this sweet and fantastic day, and also where you can score some of the best donut deals and discounts around town. And welcome back. It's about 544. In your morning consumer headlines, some Walmart employees will soon get a perk for working at the nation's largest retailer, a new Samsung phone. So Walmart is giving out 700 40,000 workers, that's nearly half of its employees, a free phone by the end of the year, which they can use for personal and professional needs. It's not clear who will cover any possible monthly service costs. It's also rolling out a new employee app called Me at Walmart. It's meant to help workers with scheduling, clocking in and out for their shifts and helping customers. Smartphones are the latest techno technological advancement for Walmart. The retailer recently announced plans to build automated mini warehouses in dozens of its stores to speed up customers' online delivery and curbside pickup orders. Attention, Amazon shoppers. You are getting your Prime Day this month. As a matter of fact, two of them, the annual sales event, set for June 21st and 22nd. Last year during the pandemic, it was pushed into October. Amazon promising Prime members will be able to check out more than 2 million deals. Peloton is introducing pricing tiers for its app that will give students, healthcare workers, and military members major discounts. The app featuring thousands of instructor-led fitness classes normally costs about $12.99 a month, but students will now pay $6.99. Teachers, healthcare workers, and first responders will be charged $9.99, and mil military members and their families can pay a $9.99 rate that's locked in for life. Wow. The company said it's an effort to make its popular digital membership, quote, more inclusive and accessible to a range of professionals and communities. The digital only memberships offer classes that don't require Pelotons, treadmills or stationary bikes. They've grown to nearly 900,000 subscribers. The tiered pricing is the company's latest effort to broaden its dedicated user base. All right, big news, folks. It's National Donut Day. We're looking for the best ways to celebrate this sweet holiday. RJ Marcus takes a look at the origins of Donut Day and tells us which places will have special deals. National Donut Day was started by the Chicago branch of the Salvation Army back in 1938. It was all started to honor the Lassies, or Donut Dollies, who had served donuts to servicemen in World War I. It was also a fundraiser to help the people who were suffering during the Great Depression. Fast forward to today, donuts are everywhere. From Krispy Kreme to Shipley's to Dunkin' to Duck's, this sweet pastry treat is something that brings everyone together. So where can you get the best donut deals? According to USA Today, Krispy Kreme is sweetening its annual free giveaway. People who are vaccinated can get two free treats when they show proof of getting the COVID-19 vaccine. At Duck's Donuts, you can get a free bear, cinnamon sugar, or powdered sugar donut with no purchase necessary. At Dunkin', just purchase any beverage and get a free classic donut of your choice while supplies last. You can also get one free glazed donut at Shipley's with any purchase. Many other local donut shops are having similar specials. Just check with them for more information. And if you really want something different, Nestle's DiGiorno brand has a brand new pizza and donut mashup, dubbed the DiGiornut, and is giving it away on Twitter. Fans can enter by replying to at DiGiorno's tweet with hashtag sweepstakes for a chance to win a half dozen box. Keep in mind, the typical donut clocks in at around 200 calories, but do calories really count on National Donut Day? RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. That was weird. DiGiorno has a donut? The DiGiornut? Yeah. And um, they have, um, at, well, at locally at Art of Donut, they have uh, like a pretzel donut. That sounds pretty yeah, good. Yeah, with they egg. Also have one with and with bacon, yeah. And bacon, yeah, the, su the sweet and the, the salty yeah. are always a, a really good well, combination. And at this time in the morning, you know, our crew, I mean, sure, we'll take a pizza donut. I'll, tr I'll try it. Absolutely. Would you try the Dojournut, Stephen? I've already entered my name in for the sweepstakes. Congratulations. <laughs> in the middle of that story. You know, but, you know, it's National Donut Day, and it's also a good day to be hitting the road. Things are looking pretty smooth for this Friday morning commute. Let's go over and take a look here, though. We do have a stall that's happened right here at Loop 410 eastbound at Blanco. That does look like it's clearing up now, actually, when we checked our system there. So that shouldn't cause any issues if you're heading out in the next few moments. But we have spotted a slowdown here off Highway 16 or Bandera right at Mystic Parks. Traffic slowing down to 21 miles per hour.
per hour there. So we're gonna have to check that out and see what's going on and find out what's how that may impact your morning drive as you're gonna be heading out the door here in the next few moments. But things have been pretty nice and smooth here. This is a view from Transguide at 35 at San Marcos. Things are picking up as the day is getting started, but of course we'll be here to get you through it. Thank By you, the way, Steven. Producer has donuts back there. If you oh, she I heard, but I didn't see any. Are they all gone? No, the, I had a, I opened them for her. So. Oh, you did. did? You there, yeah. Maybe I'll bring the box. Very over. noble of you, Stephen. And, and, and they are, I they are delicious. So. And again, uh, Mike doing a monologue from Gone with the Wind here over oh, the wall. Right? Yes. <laughs> all he's missing is his petticoat. But just yeah. wait. <laughs> What's interesting is after all of that rain yesterday. I mean, this is how the day ended up. It was absolutely beautiful over there in Converse. Great looking picture. But uh, yeah, a lot of folks were just still plodding through puddles and everything yesterday afternoon. And that's going to be the situation for a lot of folks again today. So pretty tranquil out there right now. Uh, we've got a few more uh, decent downpours down here around Victoria and then also notice uh, here's some of the little showers that are now starting to pop up right there just to the north of Three Rivers uh, in and around Beeville, Goliad, not much but the oh even a couple little specks here now in Carnes County. So we'll continue to see a few more of these little showers just popping up and working their way off to the uh, north and northwest throughout the course of the morning and again computer models First of all, notice the big counterclockwise rotation in this. Everything kind of sweeping around this way with that upper low, which is still sitting in the vicinity, and that's what's helping with all these showers. So a few more pop up throughout the morning hours, then later on this afternoon. And again, some of those heavier downpours can be expected. We'll have a couple leftovers uh, in the evening hours, and they should be starting to kind of die down a little bit in the overnight hours. Then tomorrow, more rain is going to be developing throughout the day, some of those heavy downpours. And it looks like then, yeah, we will still have some rain on Sunday, but it's going to kind of be showers a little fewer and further between and actually a little more sunshine thrown in on Sunday. Rainfall totals still over the next a few days. We're going to be looking at, you know, a couple inches of rain kind of on average, and then you're going to get those heavier pockets like yesterday. We had some uh, radar estimates about five inches down there in southern Bear County, and just those storms just sat there and just dumped all the rain. Once again, that low is just kind of parked right on top of us. It um, really doesn't want to move all that quickly, so it stays in place through tomorrow, kind of moves on out a little bit more on Sunday. Now on Monday, even though that's kind of out of here, between these two, that's going to throw some more disturbances in here, and that's going to, I think, kind of enhance rain chances a little bit on Monday. Then that low is finally going to get on out of here, so rain chances will somewhat go with it. We begin to dry out a little bit toward the middle of the week. Another low is going to be developing down here right around the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and that looks like it is going to uh, maybe up our rain chances again then by perhaps next weekend. So still a week off, but even down the road, we got some rain. Just think by late July and August, we'll be We'll be glad we had all this rain. 75 degrees today at noon. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms will continue to pop up around the area. And then later on today, 78. That's it. Very, very, I mean, 10, 15 degrees below normal later on today. Tomorrow, we'll still be in the upper 70s, close to 80. A little bit better chance for more rain. Heavy downpours can be expected. Uh, on Sunday, still some rain, not as much. A little more sunshine Monday. I think we get some uh, heavier pockets in here again, and then rain begins to taper off into the middle of next week. Boy, Mother Nature's made quite a few deposits to the uh, to the uh, water bank in this spring. Yeah, numbers out at the airport May uh, about six and a quarter inches, roughly, mm -hmm. and so far this month, inch and a quarter. Well, we were hoping to pad that going into our typically drier, hotter months. Yes. Well, when you think about it, uh, the drought was about five weeks ago, mm -hmm. covering most all of South Texas. Pretty much gone, <laughs> gone. Yeah. So should we hope for it to extend for a, a nice cool fiesta in June? <laughs> <laughs> what is that, two weeks now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you guys seen the giant pinata in our lobby? <gasps> no. I, I missed it. It's huge. I'm going to go check it out. I mean, you out. could sneak soldiers into, into a fort. <laughs> it's so big, uh -oh. like a Trojan <laughs> horse. <laughs> yeah. But Surprise. I'll try to get a picture of it and put it on our Facebook pages. Okay. Can we, like dig little holes in there and find the candy? I, I'm not going to answer that question. This know. thing probably cost a fortune. 5.53 on your Friday morning. Glad you're with us. Sneak it into a little... Mm, I wouldn't do it, Mike. Yeah, let's go check it out. I'm going to check it out I'm right now. No. Pick three, seven, four, six, fireball zero, daily four, six, four, one, zero, fireball three. Cash five numbers, one, four, 12, 20, 21, Texas two-step, nine, 10, 16, 35, bonus ball, 15.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, so much to get to, including the new headline from the CDC director about, quote, troubling data on hospitalizations of teens. And then more people are getting vaccinated and getting back to work. And there are some major companies that are offering hiring incentives right now. We'll tell you all about that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. And speaking of, some of you may still have questions about the COVID-19 vaccine. A reminder, our KSAC Community Phone Bank will help you get answers to those questions. It's happening this evening from 5 to 7 p.m. We'll be providing the number to call later today. More information available on KSAT.com. Well, ahead in our next hour, GMS at the NBA playoffs, Lakers lose and LeBron reacts to going home early for the first time ever in the NBA playoffs. Plus, Crime Stoppers detailed finding the person who robbed an adult store. There could be a reward for information about the incident. And Transguide right now, we are looking at fairly light traffic for an early Friday morning. Stephen Cavazos has more, and Mike has your weekend forecast. Stick around. Now at six, today is a national day of action when it comes to vaccine education. We're answering some of your most asked questions about the COVID-19 vaccines. And Fiesta is returning, but not without some changes. We're gonna have a preview of what you can expect. And outside with live cam, we had downpours yesterday. Some of you saw a ton of rain. And Mike says there still is a decent chance of precipitation in our forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. Rise and shine. We made it to Friday. It's June 4th. Yeah, happy Friday. Yay. Thanks for joining us today. I'm really excited about it being Friday. So I'm a little tired of the rain, but I do like that we have lower temperatures to deal with. So yeah. that's okay. It was downright cool for a lot of folks mm -hmm. last night, maybe out for an evening walk uh, right before sundown. Mike yep. is here with more on what to expect for Friday and beyond. Well, now, as far as being tired of the rain, I, I, I've said I'm not going to say that because, yeah, it is. We'd like to dry out a little bit, but I uh, think so. I wasn't until yesterday. I was like, yeah, bring it on. And then in the middle of the afternoon, I was like, OK, that's a lot, that's a <laughs> lot of you're rain. Out jogging in the rain, right? <laughs> yes, I did. I did. <laughs> OK. Case in point. Anyway, it's <laughs> nice to see everything all green out there. Uh, but yes, it is causing some problems in places with those heavy downpours, some runoffs some flooding. And unfortunately, that is going to be the situation again today where we may see some of those very heavy downpours on already saturated ground. Hondo 67 right now, uh, just to upper 60s, mid upper 60s, some low 70s. All these numbers are below their respective normals as of right now. And uh, as far as rain, well, obviously, a lot of it well down to the southeast along the coast, but notice how as time has rolled on this morning, more of these little showers as expected have started to fill in. We just had a couple of them around Goliad say an hour ago, but now a few more up around uh, Gonzalez County, Carnes County, moving in toward Wilson County and even right up 37 there in toward Atascosa County and more of those little showers are going to be popping up throughout the morning and then we'll fill in maybe a couple of thunderstorms and the best place to see more rain today if you had to kind of in one general direction obviously will be toward the east and southeast, but that doesn't mean the rest of us won't see any rain. We will and some heavy downpours. Mold is going to be is once again, pardon me, on the high side from yesterday's count did come down from the previous day's reading. It's going to be interesting what the updated count looks like. And that comes out in about an hour, hour and a half. The temperatures will stay fairly steady this morning and then by noon. Still, we'll have again a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here. Only mid 70s at noon and then a high temperature today only the upper 70s again. Same thing as what we had around here yesterday. More heavy rain can be expected. Then things will start to taper off. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. A lot quieter this morning than what it was yesterday, right? Yeah, a lot quieter, Mike. And I do have to say, I don't mind the rain. I actually do enjoy the rain. It. So, uh, you know what? Things are pretty quiet, though, on our roadways here. You can see the map is pretty green. And as we head to our inbound times, that's also looking pretty green. We're looking at our, uh, let's say, for instance, here from I-10 coming into Bernie. We got about a 24-minute commute. And if you're coming into Castroville to, from de to downtown San Antonio, that is, we have about a 19-minute commute on Highway 90. And if you are coming in from Lytle on 35, we have 17 minutes right now. 
also if you're getting ready to start your day, things are looking pretty good and it would be a great time to head out the door and get things going here. And if you need to fuel up like me, let's take a look at these gas prices. We got 258 around Bear County and around the state 270 and around the country. We're looking at 304 and as we told you a little bit earlier here on GMSA, Texas or AAA, I should say, is reporting that Texas has the lowest gas prices in the country and Bear County. We have the lowest right here in the state, so that's pretty good news for you and me as well because we need to fuel up to start our day and uh, checking one last look here at Transcode. We have Loop 410 at San Pedro. Things are pretty smooth for this Friday morning. TGIF indeed. Thank you for the update, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a suspect wanted in a road rage shooting incident. Happened back on April 22nd in the 6600 block of Medina Base Road. That's near Loop 410 on the southwest side. SAPD says after someone in another car honked at him, the suspect got mad and fired a handgun at the victim's vehicle and drove off. No one was hurt. Police also need your help finding a man they say robbed an adult store on the south side. This happened on May 20th at the Ignite Adult Store on Southwest Military Drive. That's near South Park Mall. Police tell us a man took an adult toy off the shelf and left without paying. When an employee tried to stop him, the man threatened that person with a knife. Call Crime Stoppers if you have information about either of these cases. That number is 210-224-STOP. The May jobs report will be released a little bit later this morning. And one of the things people are looking at is if there's still a worker shortage here in the U.S. This comes as many businesses are struggling to fill millions of jobs. In some cases, people are still out of work because they're looking for better jobs than they had before the pandemic began. Uh, other factors include child care, fear of getting COVID and early retirement. That jobs report is scheduled to come out this morning at 730 San Antonio time. Well, so many people have already received the COVID-19 vaccine. Many still have questions or they're hesitant about getting one. Some have questions about two of the vaccines out there and how they're working. Our Courtney Friedman tries to answer that. Two of the main COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, were made using what's called messenger RNA or mRNA. Many people hesitant to get the shot worry it's a brand new type of vaccine. mRNA is a protein in our bodies that teaches other cells how to react to intruders like the virus that causes COVID-19. It's simply a messenger, and once it sends its message, the body destroys it so it does not linger or interact with your DNA. The research surrounding mRNA vaccines has actually been around for decades. Experts say that's why the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were able to be developed so fast. It's thanks to that existing research and the money and leeway given to the trials during this global crisis. It happened quickly because they were able to do steps in parallel. So they were able to make the vaccine up front instead of having all of these delays. There are all these delays that because the money was there to just create the vaccine, they didn't have to do. So the safety and the, the methods were the same, but you were just able to compress that time frame. Dr. Shad Deering is the maternal fetal medicine department chair at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio and goes over all this information all the time with his patients who are usually pregnant. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology recommends the vaccine be available for pregnant women, citing safety in several different recent and ongoing trials. We've done a large series of stories over the past months about getting the vaccine during pregnancy or while dealing with infertility. You can find those stories on the parenting page at ksat.com. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And some of you may still have questions about vaccines. Our KSAT Community Phone Bank will help get your answers to those questions later this evening. Dr. Jason Bowling, Director of Hospital Epidemiology from University Health, will be addressing your concerns and answering any questions in today's KSAT Q&A. So the phone bank is today from 5 to 7 p.m. We're going to be providing the number to call later today so you can find more information on our website at kset.com. San Antonio officially getting the return of one of our favorite traditions here. The city council voted Thursday to approve several street closures and other administrative matters that paved the way for Fiesta June 17th through 27th as planned. Can you believe it? It's already been delayed from the normal time frame in April, and it's estimated there will only be about 50 events this year versus the usual 110. Big street parades by, like Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau are among the events not happening, but the Texas Cavaliers River Parade will probably be one of the biggest ones yet. 
As far as the coronavirus, the mayor was adamant the pandemic is not over. However, health officials are recommending attendees get vaccinated to make the events as safe as possible. But we're going to do this. Yes, it's exciting. And let's just hope the temperatures work out, maybe. Cooperate later on this month, <laughs> that right? That would be great. Right now, it's 608, about 68 degrees on your Friday morning. And still ahead on GMSA, the defending NBA champions sent home early. And we'll tell you about a first for LeBron James. Did you guys hear that siren last night? The uh, wambulance that they called for LeBron James? <laughs> Outside with live cam, Mike's forecast coming up. And summer vacation is here and our great graduate series is wrapping up. For a look back at all of the students we featured, just head over to our website at ksat.com. Time for a look at morning sports. Let's talk high school boys baseball. Rangers fans packing the stands at Cabinus Field in Corpus Christi to watch Smithson Valley take on Los Fresnos. Yesterday, a winner-take-all regional final game. Rangers taking control early. Bottom of the first, Rangers third and second. Ethan Gonzalez hits a line drive to right that easily scores him. Uh, Tim Arguello, but it's going to be close. Garrett Brooks as he slides to the tag and is safe. 2-0 and Smithson Valley in the bottom of the sixth now. Up for bat, Los Fresnos, Victor Lowe, and he hits one to second. It's too hard to handle as he beats the throw to first. Base is full of Falcons with one out, and that's when... The skies opened up, causing a weather delay. The game has been postponed until later this morning at 11 a.m. Down in Corpus, weather permitting. On to Missions Baseball, San Antonio took advantage of some gr uh, great pitching and big hits for their second victory in a row last night in Springfield. Missions trailed early. Cardinals scored bottom of the second on a solo homer, but then San Antonio proceeded to score nine unanswered runs. Uh, final score 9-1. to one. Mission stay in Missouri again tonight through Sunday. A new series starts Tuesday against the Acadiana Cane Cutters. Turning now the NBA, a stunner in L.A. The Suns in town. One went away from ending the Lakers season. L.A.'s trouble started early. Anthony Davis leaves the game in the first quarter after re-aggravating a groin injury. And in the end, the team just could not get past Devin Booker and the Red Hot Suns. Final from Staples Center, Suns win 113-100. This is also the first time in LeBron James's 18-year pro career that he has been eliminated in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Um, you know, records are, um, if there's a record or if it's not, they're, they're always meant to be broken. So um, in, in, that, in that fashion, um, you know, it doesn't matter to me as far as, you know, not making it out of the first round. What matters to me is um, getting this team back healthy. And a moment of silence from Spurs fans. All right, moving on. Game five in Portland of the first round series between the Nuggets and Blazers. Portland head coach Terry Stotts couldn't believe what he was seeing. Blazers had a 14-point lead, six and a half to play in the third. Only watched Denver go on a 40-15 to 15 run. Denver takes game five and wins the series. Final score, Nuggets 126, Blazers 115. I know you're really sad about LeBron. I am. I am. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Not really, huh? <laughs> it's somebody else's turn. That's okay. That, exactly. Yeah, I yes. think so. Your positivity is infectious. <laughs> Keep well, on speaking, yeah, even about that. Speaking about that, the roads looked pretty good from Transguide from here, Stephen. Yeah, you know, not too bad, Mark and Steph, which is what, of course, we love to see with our drivers taking it nice and easy here on our roadway so far. Let's jump over here to Transguide. Let's see at Loop 410 at Callahan. People getting their day started, hopefully getting a cup of coffee. Great way to start the morning. Not nothing too bad to report, although we have spotted a few things that we want to keep an eye out for. Uh, just if you're coming into downtown uh, San Antonio from New Braunfels, we're looking at 25 minutes. As you remember, yesterday was a big issue when we had a major crash that took up both lanes there yesterday. Thankfully, nothing too bad this morning. If you're coming in from I-10 West Seguin to downtown, we're looking at 28 minutes, so nothing too bad right now. Let's go ahead and jump over here again to our map looking pretty green here in the Alamo City and the surroundings, so nothing too bad to to report right now, but of course we're going to be keeping a close eye as the morning does pick up. All right, thank you very much, Stephen. A new report in the New York Times says American intelligence officials have found no evidence that aerial phenomena witnessed by Navy aviators in recent years are alien spacecraft. However, 
The article goes on to say they still cannot explain the unusual movements that have mystified scientists and the military, according to the findings of a highly anticipated government report. The Times reports determines that a vast majority of more than 120 incidents over the past two decades did not originate from any American military or U.S. technology. However, because of the findings of the report, they're so ambiguous, senior officials say government, the government cannot definitively rule out theories the phenomena observed by military pilots might be alien spacecraft. Might be? So it's, okay. so it's not ours. They don't think it's alien, but the end, in the end, they think it might be alien. Or they, <laughs> some they some theories are that it's you know, very, very, very high-tech drones developed by Russia, China, I heard that this morning, but hey, again, they can't rule it out that it's not from outer space. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's strangely vague, that's for sure. <laughs> strangely well, vague. Because mm -hmm. they don't know. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they're aliens. I'm just going to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. You think they're what? <laughs> I don't know, aliens. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I, and I don't. Uh, that kind. I was. I was just thinking that kind of technology would have to be extraordinarily expensive. I couldn't imagine China or Russia paying for that kind of tech. This is true, Mark. I, I saw one report this morning uh, talking about that, and it said that uh, some Navy pilots saw something. It was like they mm -hmm. described it being almost like tic tac shaped, right? And then it disappeared, and seconds later, a Navy ship. I think it was like a couple of hundred miles away, picked it up on radar mm -hmm. that was about 50 miles from that ship. So it had almost instantaneously gone from here to over there. Hmm. Hmm. The Give truth the hibby -jibbies is out here. there somewhere. <laughs> All we need is Agent Scully and Mulder. Mulder, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> All right, temperatures right now. Uh, still on the, the cool side compared to normal. The uh, average temperature is 71 for low here in town. We're at 68 as of right now. And yeah, we are going to see more showers and thunderstorms. Already got a couple more showers popping up right now. And there may be some heavy downpours with some of those showers as well. Same thing tomorrow. And we'll have rain on Sunday, but fewer storms, fewer showers around here, and actually a little bit more sunshine. I think we get another pretty hefty dose of rain on Monday in parts, and then rain will continue to taper off as we go into the middle part of next week. Okay, if you're watching last half hour, Marco's talking about this giant pinata out there. Yes, that is a real picture. I'm standing behind this thing. Yep. It is the size of a horse. Obviously, I knew it was big when I was driving in, but I didn't know. I'm glad you stood there for scale. Hit back out real quick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So our security guy just took this picture. Yes. And that thing is bigger than you. Yeah. yeah you know, and, and what's nice is the stuff on there on the side is long enough. When I cut a hole in there to fish around for candy, <laughs> I found a 20. This is great. So. You did not. I did. There was no. a 20 stuffed in there. So. No, it wasn't. Now I'm going to check again. Now go put the hole back, glue it up, tape it up so nobody can see nobody it. Nobody will find it. Yeah. <laughs> There's multiple oh, the, pinatas in there. There's a little I, one there. I know, too. even the yeah. little ones are mm -hmm. big for pinatas, but they're yeah, nice. That thing's huge. You can ride that thing. All right. Uh, we, you know why it's so big, Mike? Why? More because candy? we expect more. Ah. Get them bumped. <laughs> Such the company man. Anyway, we got uh, we, things are fairly quiet right now. We do have uh, cloudy skies, obviously, and more of these showers are starting to pop up. We just had the few down here along the coast earlier this morning, but this is really starting to uh, fill in down here uh, in our eastern and southeastern counties. Just these light little showers, and they will continue to fill in and spread throughout the rest of the morning, which is what computer models are indicating that we are going to have some of these showers around this morning. And you can't rule out some of these heavy down. Downpours. It's tropical air out there. It's like a sponge. You get it squeezed. And the other problem, and this was a, the issue yesterday, is these storms that were dumping a whole lot of rain, they weren't going anywhere. They were just kind of sitting in one spot. And so it was just continuing to rain and rain in one spot. And that's why uh, down on the south side of Bear County, we picked up about three, four, five inches of rain. Some of the estimates and even going down into Atascosa County and down to the southeast where up at the airport it was just about an inch. Uh, tomorrow we start off maybe one or two showers and then more are going to be developing throughout the day and more potentially heavy rain is in the forecast for tomorrow. Sunday, and again, any of these storms can dump a lot of heavy rain, but there'll be fewer and further between though, like once we get into Sunday and then again tapering off by next week. 75 degrees today at noon, couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm or two, and then a high temperature today up to 78, so 10 to 15 degrees below normal, more showers, thunderstorms around the area, potentially some heavy downpours. Tomorrow, about the same situation. I think we start off somewhat quiet, rain's gonna develop, a little more sunshine on Sunday. For some folks, a better chance to uh, maybe dry out a little bit. More rain next week, 
the best opportunity next week is going to be Monday, and then it'll just be kind of scattered and isolated going into the middle of next week. I'm, so. si I'm smirking because I'm sitting here imagining Mike, who always carries a pocket knife, carving a hole small enough to dig into that <laughs> pinata to look for candy and or cash. Well, if anyone case. can achieve that, it would be Mike. <laughs> You'll never notice it. Yeah. Okay. Just a few candies, right? Hopefully did on the backside. I did. Six, thank you. 621 on your Friday morning. And still ahead on GMSA, a major milestone for the Macarena. Details after the break. So tell me, what was life like before Lee Filter? To be honest, dangerous. I cringed every time we climbed up to clean the gutters. Clogged gutters caused so much damage to my home. What do you like most about Lee Filter? Everything. The installation, the lifetime transferable warranty. Lee Filter just works flawlessly at filtering out leaves and debris. So I take it you'd recommend Lee Filter? Absolutely. All my neighbors already know. Go to getleafilter.com for your free gutter inspection and estimate. Act now and save 15% off your purchase. Because of our gender, who we fall in love with, the color of our skin, or the ability of our bodies, our life's work may never be seen or heard. It's time for change. LifeWater is on a mission to fill the world with creativity by people like us, so it can inspire the next generation. Join LifeWater's movement to make unseen artists seen. A big policy change over at Facebook. They are set to announce an end to its exemption for politicians to break hate speech rules. The exemption was based on the idea that what political leaders say is the public interest, even if it breaks the rules. Google is making it harder for Android apps to track users. That will happen when so-called advertising IDs of those who've opted out of receiving personalized ads are cut off. The extra layer of security starts later this year. Finally, a major milestone for the Macarena. It has been 25 years since it's topped the charts. To celebrate, the duo behind the song Los Del Rio is teaming up with Airbnb to host a luxurious vacation at a villa in Spain. Bookings open June 28th. Part of your stay includes free tips on how to do the Macarena, if you remember, or are just now joining along and learning. Yeah, I mean, that was 25 years ago. I know, <laughs> right? A long time. Our director has asked me to do it, and I'm going to, again, we're trying to keep viewers, not lose viewers, so that's not going to happen. Yeah, next time. <laughs> in, the, in the next 25 years. Right. <laughs> time now, 626 and about 68 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA on your Friday morning. Is your backyard summer proof? We'll help you get, help you get ready for company. And tomorrow is the runoff election here in San Antonio. There are several district races that have yet to be decided. We're going to tell you what you need to know about the candidates. And it's pretty uh, been a light traffic so far. An incident-free morning, as far as I can tell, looking at Transcad right now. Uh, 281 at Hildebrand going in and out of downtown. Stevens back with a look at traffic. Right now, we're learning new details about an arrest in a deadly crash. The man is now facing charges. Plus, more answers to your COVID vaccine questions on this National Day of Action. What you need to know about your employer requiring vaccines. The story has a lot of people talking this morning. A high schooler here in Texas makes a big change to her valedictorian speech. What she had said that has so many people buzzing. And taking a look outside with live cam. No rain in this shot, but we are expecting more rain, but at least they're keeping the temperatures down, right? Welcome back. 630 on your Friday. It is June 4th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, we got a little bit of a break in the rain on the drive into work today, but boy, we got a lot yesterday. We did torrential downpours yeah. in many, many spots, and Mike was back with more on that. Do we keep this ball rolling for a little while longer? Yes, this trend is going to continue today and tomorrow as well, so mm -hmm. it's kind of quiet right now, but all Already some showers are starting to pop up, even more so than what was going on a couple of hours ago, and that will continue to be the case. And as you can see, it's uh, well fairly dry out there by the airport right now, and temperature is below normal. We, Like Stephanie was alluding to, it is keeping temperatures down with all this rain around here. We only made it up into the upper 70s yesterday. 68 right now, dew points at 66. No wind to speak of as of right now. And here's the heavy rain, and this is what was showing up earlier this morning. Then all of these little showers have been filling in and actually well, kind of uh, intensifying a bit there right around Goliad, uh, Carnes County, up and toward Wilson County, even a few of those 
just about up to Seguin, and I think it almost looks like we've had a couple of sprinkles here on the uh, south and southeast side of Bear County. So just watch it for some damp roads out there this morning, and more of those showers will just kind of develop and pop up throughout the morning hours and then become some of those heavy downpours later on today. Molds on the high side from yesterday's count, about half of what it was the previous day. The updated reading, which I have a strange feeling is going to go way up again. That's going to be coming out in about uh, maybe an hour or so. Shower two around the area this morning, then more showers, a couple of storms later on today. Can't rule out some heavy downpours again on top of all the uh, rain that we had yesterday. And some folks in Southern Bear County picked up four or five inches of rain. Some of the radar estimates down there. Storms tomorrow fewer on Sunday and we'll actually see a little bit of sunshine thrown in on Sunday and then next week we will start off with some potentially heavy rain Monday. Then it's going to continue to taper off as we go on into the middle part of next week. Details just a couple of minutes and traffic authority. It's been a fairly quiet morning, right, Steve? Yep, uh, very quiet here, Mike, and that's what we like to see here. 35 at Shirts Parkway looking pretty smooth right now as the day is picking up. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. You know, this was a big problem yesterday, but now things are nice and smooth. Uh, if you're coming into the downtown San Antonio area, we haven't encountered many problems out on the roadways uh, this morning, but let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times. Now, if you are coming in from 35 from New Braunfels, we do have about a 25 minute commute to downtown San Antonio. And if you are coming in from 281 from Bulverde, we have 27 minutes. And if you are coming in from Bernie from I-10, 24 minutes on in that route. So overall, things are shaping up pretty nicely. And if again, if you need to fuel up before you hit the roads, let's take one last look here at our gas prices. Bear County averaging at 258. Around the state, we're looking at 270. And around the country, we have around 304. And as we've been telling you throughout the morning, uh, AAA is reporting that Texas does have the lowest gas prices in the country and here in San Antonio we take the crown for 258 as the lowest around the state as well. So that's pretty good news. One last look here at 35 at Shirts Parkway. The day is shaping up. Thank you, Stephen. We want to get to some late breaking news. San Antonio police have detained 29 people they found in a tractor trailer just a few hours ago. Police say it happened around 4 this morning on Quesenberry Road. That's near Somerset and Fisher Road on the far southwest side of town. Here's what we know. It turns out people who live in the area heard banging coming from a tractor trailer. Investigators say there were between 60 and 80 people in that trailer, but many of them left after they saw police coming. Authorities were able to detain 20 men and 9 women. The trailer came from Laredo and the people inside were there for close to four hours. We're told the trailer was air conditioned and everyone inside was OK. Homeland Security is taking over that investigation. We'll keep you posted on that still developing story. New this morning, one man's in jail after a deadly crash. Here's a look at 22 year old Isaiah Carrillo. The crash happened back on October 24th at Evers in Fairford. That's on the west side, not far from the San Antonio Aquarium. According to an arrest affidavit, Carrillo crashed his sedan into a truck, killing the driver. Carrillo was taken to a hospital where it was determined he was intoxicated. He now faces a charge of intoxication manslaughter. Also new this morning, Texas Parks and Wildlife releasing incident information from Memorial Day weekend. Texas game wardens say they were really busy. Several deaths and other boating incidents were reported. Over 1,200 citations were issued and 17 boating accidents across the state were investigated. There were also three boating related deaths. Game wardens across the state say they dealt with other non boating related issues as well as things like drug use, shooting incidents and domestic violence. This morning, an update on the pandemic here in Bear County. Numbers continue to drop when it comes to COVID cases. Metro Health says as more vaccinations happen, cases will continue to drop. Our seven day average now stands at 106 cases per day. Four new deaths were also reported in our local hospitals. 140 COVID patients are being treated. 42 are in intensive care and 23 are on ventilators. When it comes to our positivity rate, that percentage has stayed below 3% for another week. It now stands at 1.3%. The goal now is to get to 70% of the county vaccinated. Right now, that number stands at about 50%. The numbers show that about 64% have at least one dose. When it comes to getting the COVID-19 vaccine, can an employer require you to get the shot? According to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, yeah, they can. The EEOC issued guidance last week that spells that out. Some employers are hesitant, rather employers 
are hesitant to mandate the vaccine, given the fact that none of the vaccines have received full approval from the FDA. However, the agency says employers can offer incentives to staff members who volunteer their vaccine information. As far as requiring the vaccine, EEOC says that an employer can require employees to get vaccinated before entering the workplace, as long as the company follows provisions in the Civil Rights Act and the Americans with Disabilities Act. And some of you may still have questions about vaccines. Our KSA Community Phone Bank will help get you answers to those questions later this evening. Dr. Jason Bowling, Director of Hospital Epidemiology from University Health, will be addressing your concerns and answering any questions in today's KSA Q&A. The phone bank is happening today from 5 to 7 p.m. And we're going to be providing the number to call later today. You can find all this information on our website at KSA.com. Bear County Courts opened up this week to in-person jury trials and hearings, and already there has been a lot going on. Erica Hernandez has a recap of what went down inside the courtroom. On Tuesday, after being closed for more than a year, the courts were finally fully reopened and potential jurors reported to jury duty. While it was a bit of a slow start, judges are still incorporating Zoom in some proceedings, but the mass restrictions have eased up for those fully vaccinated. Local Administrative Judge Ron Rangel expects everything to get back in order. A lot of these cases have been working out. We anticipate that that's going to continue to happen throughout the course of the next couple of months. With that, our backlog should improve. On Wednesday in the 226 District Court, a hearing for a man diagnosed with autism was held. Eric Fox Hernandez is facing arson charges. A motion was filed by his attorney to get his GPS monitor removed. The judge ruled he must continue to wear the ankle monitor, but relaxed restrictions and eliminated fees for it. Those terms will be reevaluated in 30 days. And today, a plea hearing is taking place for a man who was given the death penalty back in 2005. But in 2018, an appeals court granted an appeal of his death penalty sentence. Later today, we'll explain what that new plea agreement is and why that sentence was overturned. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. A reminder tomorrow's one off election day here in San Antonio, while half of the San Antonio City Council races were decided during the May 1st election. Races for districts 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9 were too close to call. We have information on all the candidates on our website, ksat.com. We will begin our election night coverage tomorrow night starting at 7 p.m. online and results on air tomorrow night on the Night Beat. And we have a story about the high school Bella Victorian here in Texas who changed the subject of her graduation speech without telling her school. Yeah, she spoke her mind on a hot button political issue, but as ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, she never imagined her speech would get the response it did. This morning, the Texas high school valedictorian whose graduation speech has gone viral is speaking out. It's scary to put your face on something that is so controversial. Paxton Smith was planning to speak about the role of the media in society when she addressed her graduating class. But without telling school administrators, she switched her topic to something far more controversial, the new Texas abortion law. It feels wrong to talk about anything but what is currently affecting me and me millions of other women in the state. In September, the so-called heartbeat bill is set to become law, banning abortions after six weeks of pregnancy, regardless of rape or incest. It's considered the most restrictive abortion law in the country. Millions of children lose their right to life every year because of abortion. In Texas, we work to save those lives. Paxton says she felt obligated to speak out. I am terrified that if my contraceptives fail, I am terrified that if I am raped, then my hopes and aspirations and dreams and efforts for my future will no longer matter. Paxton telling ABC's Lindsay Davis she can't believe the response her speech is getting from across the country. When your speech went viral, even getting a retweet from Hillary Clinton, what was your reaction to that? I was shocked. I didn't expect the speech to really go far past the stage. Paxton finished her speech without interruption. We cannot stay silent. Thank you. The school district says it now plans to review student speech protocols in advance of next year's graduation ceremonies. The school points out that valedictorian speeches do not reflect the school's position or that of its employees. 
Paxton says her parents were the only one she told about switching her topic. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. And time now is 641 and it's about 68 degrees right now. Still head on GMS is your back art yard ready for summer. How you can get it ready to party still to come. And welcome back. It's about 644 now. It's finally summertime, and while you might be ready, is your backyard ready? In this morning's Ask Andy segment, RJ Marquez has some tips for getting ready for a backyard bash. Summer is here, and we're all ready to head outside and have some fun. But before we do, it's important to get our outdoor spaces ready. You'll want to start with a clean slate. So the first step is a good cleanup. Removing those twigs, branches, or leaves from past seasons is a good first step. Once you've got that done, give your grass a good mow. Next, you'll want to tackle some basic cleaning, like power washing your deck and dusting off your outdoor furniture. If necessary, add a fresh coat of paint to the furniture to get it looking like new. Now that your backyard is really starting to look good, how can you make it feel good? Don't let bugs and insects ruin your outdoor fun. Instead of coating yourself with bug spray each time you go outside, consider planting some bug repelling plants in your garden. Things like marigolds, citronella, and lemon balm can do the trick. With the right setup and effort, you can transform your yard into the place you'll want to spend most of your time this summer. Get creative. The possibilities are endless. If you have the time and budget, think about installing an outdoor TV. It can make for some really fun outdoor movie nights. Or if you want to go even bigger, think about having a pro install that dream outdoor kitchen. Investing in your outdoor living space typically has a great ROI. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Good morning, everyone. Well, the morning is picking up and we're spotting a few stalls in our area. This one just happened here at 281 and Hildebrand. You can see that we do have a truck that's been pulled off here to the side and a police officer just rolled up there to help that person. Now, what we spotted is a few people moving over here uh, to the other lanes to give this these people plenty of room, which is what we want to do when we see situations like this out on their roadways. Make sure everybody, of course, gets to where they need to be safely. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our times here off 1604 as the morning does pick up. Things are still looking good for the morning commute here in the eastbound lanes from Bandera to 281. And if you're in those westbound lanes right now, we're looking at 11 minutes as well. So nothing too bad right now. One last look here at Transguide. We'll be keeping track with these stalls, see how that could impact your commute this morning. We'll have it coming up in the next few minutes. Mike. Thank you, sir. And boy, this is a picture from yesterday. St. Hedwig over there in uh, East Southeast Bear County. And wow, I mean, just water just flowing across the fields because uh, in some areas picked up, especially South Southeast Bear County and South and East of there, three, four, five inches of rain in some of those hefty storms. We don't have anything out at the airport right now, except a lot of cloud cover, as you can see. And again, some of the rainfall estimates, this is on radar, it wasn't measured on the ground, but pretty good idea that again, the majority of the rain was to the east to the southeast. Again, we're looking at four and a half, five, close to six inches of rain here in South Bear County. And out at the airport, it was just over an inch officially, so lesser amounts. But, you know, you think about it comparing. Yeah, we didn't get much compared to down here, but an inch of rain in one day. That's a lot, especially given what we've had. But over there in northeastern Medina County in and around Medina Lake, about an inch and a half of rain. And yeah, there's that lion share those. And the problem was those storms just kind of sat there and didn't move all that much. And so that's why I dumped all that rain in one spot. We're continuing to see more of these showers, albeit very light showers, but they are sort of popping up, filling in a little bit more, everything drifting up to the north, basically. And even a couple of those looks like on the eastern side of uh, Bear County here and heading up in Guadalupe County and towards Seguin. So watch out for a little bit more of this rain this morning, then more will fill in, develop throughout the day. And we're still looking at over the next few days, you know, another couple, two, three inches of rain. And then you're going to have those bullseyes with the higher rainfall amounts if those storms decide to dump a whole bunch. And it's that low that's sitting right on top of us basically it's not going anywhere it's going to stick around here so it keeps the rain chances in around today tomorrow then it sort of oozes or edges out a little bit and that's going to lessen the rain chances on Sunday Monday we will have a bit of a disturbance in between these two coming in here and that's going to give us a sort of an enhanced rain chance just a little bit of a, a glitch right there but that'll be a rainier day and then that high moves on in here and that's going to kind of settle things down going into the middle part of next week another low is going to try and pop up around here and 
Looks like maybe enhance our rain chances going into next weekend. Details today will make it up to 75 at noon. A few more showers, a couple of thunderstorms around, maybe some heavy downpours all the way through the afternoon. 78 for a high temperature, of course. Runoff, flooding in the usual low lying spots is definitely going to be a concern today as well as tomorrow. Any of these showers, just given the fact that the ground is so saturated and high temperatures will still stay, well, only upper 70s today. Mid 80s to start next week, upper 80s, not quite up to normal. A lot of humidity though, but and watch the water standing around, puddles, yes, things like that, you know, just so. And just a friendly reminder. Right around uh, the base of the flower pots there. Right. Yeah. So mosquitoes don't uh, grow. Yeah, we keep having to empty them out yep. over and over again. Exactly. Hey, if you missed it earlier, go to the KSAT Facebook page. Look for Mike standing next to the ginormous pinata in the KSAT lobby. You've got to see it. Yeah. It's almost from Good the picture. Clydesdale series, I think so. Uh, sea Biscuit. Sea Biscuit. Okay. Yes, but I don't know how to say Sea Biscuit in Spanish, so we'll go with that. 650, about 68 degrees. Tomorrow morning on GMSA, we introduce you to a great graduate who has not only overcome so much, but is now using what she has to help others. She started her own charity. We'll explain tomorrow on Good Morning San Antonio. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, uh, we're starting to see showers here and there and expect some later today as well. Just be prepared. We'll be right back. Back to a late breaking story we're tracking right now. San Antonio police have detained almost 30 people they found in a tractor trailer just a few hours ago. Police say it happened around four this morning on Cuisinberry Road. That's near Somerset and Fisher Road on the far southwest side of town. People who live out there heard banging coming from that tractor trailer and investigators say there were 60 to 80 people inside, but they fled when they saw authorities coming. Uh, they were able to detain 20 men and nine women. We're told the trailer came from Laredo and the people inside were there for close to four hours. But we're also told the trailer was air conditioned and that everyone inside was OK. Homeland Security is now taking over the investigation. Right now, it's just about five till seven on your Friday morning. And everything was pretty clear earlier, but it looks like uh, 281. There's something happening there, Stephen. Yeah, crashes and stalls now just popping up in our system. Looks like it's all happening at once. So let's go ahead and get to some of the ones that will be impacting your commute right now. This stall is happening here at 281 northbound right at Hildebrand. You can see that we do have a first responder out there along with some maintenance crews working to help that person. Uh, but it does look like that stall was impacting traffic just a little while ago. But people that are driving down northbound on 281, be sure to move over to those extra lanes and give these uh, folks plenty of room to get out out of there safely. Uh, again, that's all 281 northbound at Hildebrand. We've also spotted a crash. It's happening here off San Pedro Avenue at Sahara, not impacting anyone's drive right now, but be prepared. That could be an issue if you're heading out the door in the next few moments. Our inbound time is looking pretty good so far. 281 coming in from Bulverde. We're looking at 28 minutes, and if you're coming in from I-10 on uh, to Bernie, we're from Bernie, that is, we're looking at 24 minutes in Highway 90, 19 minutes to downtown San Antonio. One last look here at Transguide. Again, be safe on the road. We'll be keeping a close eye as well. A couple of showers are already starting to pop up around the area, especially to the east and southeast, and all those, those are drifting up to the north. So watch out for a few more around this morning. More going to be developing later on uh, in the late morning and afternoon hours. Some heavy downpours can be expected. 68 right now, and we'll hit a high today up to 78 degrees. Could see some of those heavy downpours. Same thing tomorrow, and then rain chances drop down somewhat on Sunday. A little chance to dry out more rain Monday, and then definitely tapering off by the middle of next week. We hope you have a good Friday and a great weekend. Guys, be careful out there and we'll see you back here at nine.